my goodness. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. Glory yeah. To God. Yeah. yeah. A lot of turkey and dressing and mac and cheese and all that other good stuff. Well, I tell you what. This is a season for Thanksgiving and yes, giving God. thanks. And every day we should give thanks. Amen. Amen. We should give thanks unto the Lord for just who he is. He's an awesome God. He is God all by himself. Yes, God. Yes. He is the God of redemption. He's a God that's a healer. Yes. He is a God that is a deliverer. Yes, God. He is a God that is your friend. Yes. He is a God that will correct you when you're wrong. Yes. Hallelujah. So this morning, if y'all would come to your feet, let's get our minds and our yes, hearts God. ready Hallelujah. to praise, praise you, the Lord praise yes. and give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. You can do better. Let's give God an awesome hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. Let him know that you're excited about what he's done for you. Yes, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we want to welcome y'all to Revive Church. We want to thank y'all who are joining us out there online. And we hope today that you hear something, that you see something that gives you a life-changing experience. And that at the end of this service, that or during the service, you ask, what must I do to be saved? What is that feeling that's coming over me that makes me feel so different right now? And it's the Holy Spirit talking to you. And you want more of that. So we ask that you join in with us right now for, for praise and worship time. Lord, we give you honor and praise. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, as we come before you this morning, Lord, we are truly thankful. We are truly grateful, Lord, that you are God all by yourself. That you are God of love. A God that heals a God that delivers. Yes, God. Lord, we just thank you for who you are and all that you do, Lord. And we ask today that the Holy Spirit just reigns upon this place, yes, that lives are changed and transformed, and we'll be so ever to give you all the praise, the glory, yes, and all the God. honor in Lord Jesus' God. name. Jesus. Amen. Let's give God our hand praise. Let's give him a hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and tell somebody Hallelujah. good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let somebody good morning. know you are glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Good morning. Online family, good morning. Hallelujah. Good so glad morning. you are here. God is good this morning. We came to worship an awesome God. Hallelujah. So excited to be in the house of the Hallelujah. Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited this morning? Yes, God. Yes. Has God done some great things in your life this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, he's amazing. Hallelujah. He's good. Yes, he His is. His word says he's great and greatly to be praised. Yes, he Come is. on, praised. put your hands together. Come yes, on, God. lift up your voice. Come on, exalt Go His name. Tell him thank you this morning for another day journey, and I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. We lift up the name, precious name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, the beautiful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's glorify him. Hallelujah. We brag on our God this morning. Hallelujah. He's great. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Water, you turned into wine. You opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you. Yes, God. None like you. Come on, say. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Declare that this morning. No one. None like yeah. you. Come on. Say our God is greater. Our God Woo. is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is here. Our God is here. Awesome in power. Awesome in power.
darkness, then what can stand against? Come on. If our God is for us, then who could else and do? If our God, if our God what can stand? Us, then come what on, can man. stand and if if our God, and come on, declare. If our God is for us, then who could else stop us? And if our God is for us, then what can stand against? Oh yes, I'm free. Oh yes, I'm free. I bless the Lord. Oh yes, I'm. 
of your grace, only because of your mercy. We give you praise in this place. And as we give you praise, you may be seated. Thank you. Good morning, Revive Church. Good morning. Yes, hallelujah. I uh, hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving, plenty of food and family and fun. I know we did at our house. Uh, a few announcements for you this morning. We offer Men Talk Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, through the website at revivechurchatl.org. The ladies group will be meeting next Saturday, December 2nd from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. You can get more details at revivechurchatl.org. The marriage couples group will meet online December 3rd, and we have discipleship Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, we have a new member partner orientation every Monday at 7.45 via Zoom. You can connect again through the revivechurchatl.org uh, website. Uh, text message reminders will be sent out for all these meetings. Also, our Sunday social party is the first Sunday in December 
right after service. It's a great time for fellowship and to meet leaders and have a meal together, break bread. So we hope to see you next Sunday. Uh, that's all I have for now. Back to these wonderful people. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Elder. You rise back to your feet as we continue to worship our God, continue to give him praises. Amen. 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 Praise God. Y'all excited about God this morning? Amen. Amen. Do not Amen. get weary or get tired of praising his name and just thanking yes. him for his goodness. Somebody said, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. And your mercy, mercy. endure forever. Forever. Yes, forever. Do you believe that? That his mercy endureth forever. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what um, is on your mind this morning. God is able. He's more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask for things. So we praise his name this morning. God is able. God is more than able. We exalt your name, God. We lift up your name, Jesus. Thank you for your presence in this place, God. Thank you for your power in this place, God. As we lift up your name, God, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, God. Yes. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Do as you want to do in this place, in each one of us. In each one of us, do as you want to do, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray, yes. amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
thank you, oh God. Can we tell him thank you? Thank you, Lord. 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 You deserve the praise, God. You deserve the glory, God. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If I had a ten thousand tongues, it wouldn't be enough to tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shouldn't even be here today. Yes. Hallelujah. But you made a way. Thank you, Lord. You made a way for me to be here, God. Yes, God. And I give you the praise, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You've been so good come on lift it up with us you've You've been been come on from your heart so good lift up your voice and you've been you've been so good so good come on say you've been lord you've been so good so good you've been lord you've been my healer (laughs) my healer lord yeah just in my body, God. So good. But in my mind, you've been my healer. You've been. You've been, God. So good. You've been my friend, Jesus. You've been. When everybody else walked away, so good. It was you, Lord, that was right by my you've side. Been. You've been, Lord. So good. You've been, Lord. You've been, Lord. So good. Come on, tell me. You've been. Food on my table. So good. You put food on my table. You been. You put money in my pocket, God. So good. You been, God. You been. You save my soul. So good. You make me whole. You been. You are my refuge, God. So good. I can run to you, Jesus. You been. I can run to you, Jesus. So good. I run to you, Jesus. No other help I know, God. 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 You've been so good. So good to me. To me. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah, God. Yeah, that, that's Thank a good you. place to praise him. Hallelujah. That's a good place to Thank praise him. God. He Hallelujah. made a way when our backs were against the yeah, wall. God. And it looked as if it was he over. He made a way, God. He Hallelujah. made a way. He Thank made a way. You. He made a way. Can I get a witness? Thank you you made a way. Yes, God. And I'm standing here only because you made a way. You come on. When our backs were against the wall. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked and it looked as if it was over. You yes. And I'm standing. And I'm standing here only because you made One more time. Say so you. Because he made the way. He is the way. Hallelujah. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Father God, we come before you right now. We give you glory in this place, God. We thank you for your presence in this place, Father. We thank you for your power in this place. We thank you that you are excellent, God. Excellent in all of your ways, Father God. All of your ways are excellent, God. So we, we acknowledge you in this place, Father God. We acknowledge you here and now, Father God. Do how you want to do, Father God, in this service, Father God. Lead us and direct us as we worship and honor and praise your name, Father God. Speak to our hearts in this time, Father God, that we will hear from you, Father God. And not only be hearers, God, but doers. Doers of your word, Father God. Be 
we ask for your presence and we just glorify your name today, Father. We pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength, our redeemer. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. Let everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You made a way. And I'm standing here only because you made you, you, come on, say it. Made a way. When our backs were, when, when our backs were against the wall. And it looked, and all it of us have been there before. Oh, you, it was him that made, made a way. Say, I'm standing here. And I'm standing here. here only, only because you made a you, way. You, you made a way. Made a way. How many backs have been against the wall? And our backs were against the wall And it looked And it looked as if it was over Oh, you You made a way Somebody say, I'm standing here And I'm standing here Only because you made a way Woo. Mm, Bless the name of Jesus Go ahead and praise him Hallelujah He made a way He made a way just when you thought it was over, he made a way because he's God. He's God. He's God Almighty. You made a way. When our backs, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked, and it looked as if it was over. You, you made. Because you made up you, you, you made Jesus did way. it, Jesus did it When our backs were against the wall And it looked, and it looked as if it was all God, you, you made away Now I'm standing here Only because Only because you made Only because As if it was over, you you made, made a way, and I'm standing. Now I'm standing. He loosed my shackles. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. I remember what my mother told me. She said, "If I had not taken you to the hospital when you were four, they said by nine you wouldn't be here." God made a way. And then when I decided to play sports, and she took me to the doctor, the doctor said he's fine to do whatever he want to do. God made a way. You can think of any time in your life where you thought it was over, but he made a way. He made a way. You don't have to think too far back. Some of us last week, some of us last year, some of us four or five years ago, some of us ten years ago. It could have been relationships. It could have been an accident. It could have been a health issue. It could have been family or friends. It could have been your own child, but he made a way. He's God. He's Elohim. He's the one that we serve. If it wasn't for the grace of God, how many know? Raise your hand. If it wasn't for the grace of God, what would I be? Because he made a way. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity to serve you. Thanksgiving is every day because you're worthy to be praised. We give you thanks every day. It's more than a mere holiday. It is Thanksgiving to you all the time because you've certainly made a way for us. God, we thank you. And Father, right now, in this moment in time, this moment is worship and thanksgiving and praise to you, Father, because only you can make a way. Yeah, yeah, you send people to assist, but you're the way maker. 
You send people to, 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 uh, to, to talk to us, to comfort us. You talk, you send those people. And you said, I've already spoken. Many times in our life, Father, in the name of Jesus, you, you've taken control and we thank you. This day, this time is dedicated to you to give you glory, honor, and praise. Thanksgiving and gratitude to you. We thank you, Father, because you made a way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. He is truly, truly, truly amazing. God is so amazing. Hey, if this is your first time here, you may be seen. If it's your first time here at Revive Church, I want to say welcome. My name is Pastor Reggie Fields, and we're so thankful to God for you. And at this moment, if you have any of your little ones with you, the little babies, children, they can be dismissed at this time. Right here in this corner, there will be a person standing there in one second holding up a sign that says Children's Church. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of Revive Church this morning, online and in the building. We're so appreciative of you. And, and let's give God a hand clap of praise because we were able to see another Thanksgiving. We were able to see another Thanksgiving. We give God honor and thanks in all that we do. And family, we are in the uh, final or well, the finale of that we have been in called Satisfied. Satisfied. The new series called Satisfied. And this is the finale of that series, the last portion of this series that will close out today. So if you will, if you can turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 17, verses 37 to 46. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 37 to 46. That's where we're going to launch from today in the reading of God's Word. And as we hear what God has to say, if you don't mind, if you're able... If you can rise to your feet for the reading of God's word, I will be reading from the New International Version. And uh, if you have your iPhones or your paper Bibles, if not, it's okay. It's right there on the screen for you, okay? 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 37 to 46. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 37 to 46. And it reads, it reads, the Lord who rescued me from the paws of the lions and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hands of the Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord will be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on the sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. He replied, I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling with him, Approached the Philistines. Meanwhile, the Philistines, with a shield bearer in front of them, armor bearers, armor bearers, shield bearers in front of him, kept close to David. He looked David over and saw that he was a little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, and my dog, that you come at me with a stick. And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give you flesh. Give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistines, you come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day... The Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give your carcass to the Philistine army, to the wild birds, the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. 
Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the reading of your word. Father, we thank you for our time together. Father, we thank you for all things. This moment in time is dedicated to you, Father. So touch the hearts and the minds of your people and that they may be changed, that we may be changed, that we may live a life that glorifies you. Change our minds and our hearts to be focused on you and to give you praise always. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. So family, we're in the new series, as I stated before, we're in a new series entitled Satisfied. And this is the finale of that series, the three, four part series that God has shown us what it means to have fulfillment and contentment in our life. So watch this. I want to tag a title to the text. A satisfying fit. A satisfying fit. Family, now, now, now follow me with this. Have you ever had a piece of paper and just balled it up and just threw it? Just threw it in the trash? Have you ever had that? I know you're like, you'd be starting off real basic, Pastor. We're starting off real basic. But, but, but have you ever balled up a piece of paper and just threw it in the trash? And, and maybe you no longer needed it or you were finished with it. And maybe it was a situation where you, you were using the paper and you made a mistake on it, so you discarded it. Maybe you just dropped it into the trash basket, or maybe you actually act like you were playing basketball and threw it in as you were making a free throw shot. Watch this. Or could you have been so frustrated that that you made an attempt to do something and you got so angry that you made a mistake on the paper that you balled it up and you threw it so hard that you were trying to get it in the trash, but you were frustrated with what was going on. But it was the emotion behind the action that determined how you threw it in the trash. Let let me give you another example. Have you ever had someone to make a promise to you and did not fulfill it? And when the promise was made, you had complete confidence in them. But when they did not fulfill the promise, you lost the confidence. You lost the confidence. You lost the confidence in them. And when the promise was made, you had the full confidence that they were going to do it. But when it was not fulfilled, you lost the confidence. In fact, you threw the confidence right out of the window. And there's a difference between casually stopping and having confidence in someone that's different than just getting frustrated and throwing it out of the window. Because this is the deal. When you throw the confidence in them out of the window, sometimes we throw them away. We'll throw the people away with the confidence that we lost in them. Have you ever done that? Y'all know, come on, let's be real. Y'all know y'all said I'm through with them. Some of y'all said that Thursday. Right after they ate the greens, the pie, the macaroni and cheese, the chicken, the the turkey, the ham, you were through with them. I'm through with you. Or even if you didn't tell them, you wait till they left. And when they left your house, you sat down with your significant other. I'm through with them. Did you hear what they said? I'm through. I'm through. Frustration that sets in. That leads to, oh, okay, let me discard them along with my confidence in them. Because they didn't bring the rice. They didn't bring what they, they didn't do it. They didn't bring the food. They said, you know what? They brought one bowl for 60 people. How they got one small cereal bowl for 60 people? Rice? That's what you brought? Getting frustrated. And, it, and this is the deal. It wasn't that important. It wasn't that important. It was Okay. You still had a good time. But do you throw them out with the confidence that you have in them? Watch this. I'm going somewhere. Watch this. There's a difference between casually stopping and having confidence and throwing them out of the window, frustrated, throwing it out of the window. And oftentimes when we throw something out of the window, the element of frustration and the anger is attached to it. And there are many Christians, including some of us listening to this message today, You've been waiting for God to do something for a long time in your life. And that something did not happen. And when it did not happen the way you want it to happen, 
you lost confidence in God. Come on, look back over your life. Think about it. Online and in the building. Look back over your life. There were some segments in your life where you said, I've lost confidence. I, I believe the promise, but this is the deal. I've lost confidence in God. Because last time, it didn't go. But, but see, we forget when he says, my ways are, are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And we here still have to believe, even when it doesn't happen, our way. Confidence. Do you have confidence in him when you don't see what you want to have and God didn't give it when you wanted to have it? Do you lose confidence? See, it's one thing to lose confidence in people, but to lose confidence in God. Because this is the deal. If you lose confidence in God, he's still your creator. If you lose confidence in God, he's still the one that, 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 that created you, that put you in the position that you're in, that have blessed you. And let's be real. Some of us put our own selves in positions and ask for God to help. Putting ourselves in positions of loss, putting ourselves in positions of challenge, and God said, you don't have to do that if you had listened. Listen, 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 listen. There are times when you try to believe and you've lost the confidence. But your mind takes you back to a time where you believed something about God and that he was going to supply all of your needs and sustain you. And this is the deal. God promises are true whether you have confidence in him or not. His promises don't change. You losing confidence in God doesn't make God false. He's still God. He's still God. And your past experience does not dictate who God is or your past experiences with him. Your bad experience is an indication that God is not still powerful, all-knowing, the great creator. No power goes away from God because we lost confidence in him. Some of us, Thanksgiving came and it went and, and we're still upset about how Thanksgiving transpired. Are you? And when there's some people in the world don't have a thanks or a giving. We, we, we have to have our confidence rooted in God, in God. And when you reach this point, your confidence in God has been cast aside. And this is the point where you struggle every day is to believe that something is going to be different and God is really going to do something that he's promising and his promises are still true yesterday, today, and forevermore. And as Christians, we must hold fast to profession of our faith and allow God to do what he does in his time, not cast aside in our confidence in him. His time, not our time. His time. Some of us are still trying to get people to do stuff on our time. And we struggle and we strain and we get upset. Why are you upset? God promises is bigger than the promises that they make to you. See, this is the deal. We, 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 we place so much emphasis on people making a way that we forget God is the way maker. We, 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 have, to be, we, we have to be careful. Casting aside God when things don't happen on our schedule. So we will examine some life of David and the challenges that he overcame. And, and, and it caused him, that could have cost him his life. And today there's. There's three essential principles that we must get, that we must get that will illuminate the idea of finding a satisfying fit in God's purpose, provision, and power. Here we go. Number one, number one, number one, number one. Here we go. Confidence in God's past faithfulness. Watch what it says in verses, verse 37. It says this, Saul said to David, go and the Lord will be with you. That's all he had to say. Go and the Lord will be with you. See, the first thing we need to believe and know and understand is that he's with us. 
well, Pastor, I don't feel like he's with me. God has never been subject to your feelings. Never. He hasn't been before. He won't be subject to your feelings in the future. Your mind, will, emotions, imagination, and affections are subject to God. You give them to God. God, take over how I feel right now. Take over what I'm dealing with. Take over the stress. I'm feeling very emotional right now, and things that, that, that I'm trying to create that are not true in my mind somehow keep coming at me. That's the enemy trying to attack my mind to tell me something that's not true. I'm going to be mad at my husband because he didn't wash the dishes. You went to bed, he washed the dishes. Then you wake up in the morning and don't let him know you were mad at him last night. But then you wake up and go, wow, you're incredible. You did that. Times where, where, where God is trying to get you to see things and your position is, no, no, no. I believe this to be true, not that. So we got social media pages that are, where we're flipping through, believing things that are not true. Because it's a quotable or a phrase that sounds good that God never said. Like, where you get that from? God never said that. And we lose confidence and begin to worship other gods. Watch this. Saul said to David, go and the Lord will be with you. Watch this. David's confidence is rooted in God and his past experience of God showing up for him. My question, what is your confidence rooted in? Oftentimes, our confidence is rooted in ourselves. You know, if I don't do this, this won't happen. If I don't do that, that won't happen. Now, yeah, faith without work is dead. Yes, you must work. You must do that. But you don't lose confidence in the one that created the work for you. He created you. He created the work. He even created the confidence that you have in him. He showed up in the past. He'll show up now. Watch David now. Watch David. Watch David. So in order for us to, to allow God to move in our lives, we must maintain our confidence in him. You want to see activity of God in your life? Be bold. Move in him with confidence. You got to look at things and say, you know what? God, I know you're going to do it. I'm not worried about your ability, God. I know you have the ability. I know you're going to do it in your timing. So I'm going to stay here, right here, until you show up and show me the change. But right now, I believe you already did it. Because if I don't have that faith, why is it necessary for God to move? God's going to move on your faith, not on your wishes. He moves on your faith. Let him move on your faith. But I already know it. Now, see, this is the deal. When you have social media and family and friends, you got to be careful who you listen to. Because you can't listen to everybody. Them the same people that told you to break up with your husband. And y'all been married 48 years now. Girl, he ain't right for you. He ain't the one. Yeah, listen to them. You would have been like them by yourself. If you had listened to him, oh, man, I don't think that's the girl for you. Well, when, when did you start judging who was who based on what you see? You can't keep nobody around you. So you're judging people, and you have a, a mark of predictability about people that you don't even know. God says confidence, confidence, confidence in me, confidence in me. Now, let, let me keep it real here for a second now. Watch this. There's some people you need to run from, and there's some people that will see some things in them that you don't need an experience with. You just need to say, yeah. You're right. I need to go. I ain't say be with everybody. I said listen to what God say, and God will send people to give you more information. Because some people can be right about what they see in other people to the point that you need to leave. 
But you stay in prayer, not in their word. You stay in God's word, not in their word. Because when we start exchanging God's words for people's words and their thoughts, that's when we get in trouble. See, the spirit has to be, you you, you, you test the spirit by the spirit. The spirit has to come along with that, not just what they say. Because sometimes we'll take advice from people with other spirits. And that spirit is not from God. That's why you have to know your word. Watch this. God can only do what we trust and believe that he will do. He can in him. He's not going to override what you believe. He's not. He's going to allow you to believe what you believe because it's a thing called free will. He allow you to believe what you're going to believe. Doesn't mean he's gone. Doesn't mean he doesn't show up. Doesn't mean he's not still God. You're going to turn around. Or you're going to continue to experience the same thing year after year, day after day, and life becomes tough. And you cry and you cry and you're going to finally cry out to somebody that you thought you knew or that you don't know in God. And some of us have given up God and the influence of God in our life to social media influencers. And we're living by words that are not God. We're living by words that make us laugh because they're funny and we think they know more because they got PhDs. PhDs are simply this. I was able to read a book, take a test, and got approved by some people that said I can have a sheet of paper. Now, I'm not denigrating and saying that it's low because it does take hard work. But there's a spirit that God brings that override and supersede the belief in something that other people have brought before you. Period. If it wasn't for Jesus, it wouldn't be a PhD. Or an undergrad degree. Or a master's degree. And the last time I checked, heaven wasn't checking for degrees. So you don't get into heaven based on how smart you are. Even Jesus walked the earth full of wisdom, but he had to be about his father's business. His will be done by his father, not his will be done by him. Watch this. Confidence. If you look up the word confidence in the Greek, it says this. You'll find that the word says parousia. Right? This word literally means to have boldness. This word literally means to be bold. It depicts a very bold, frank, outspoken kind of language. According to to Rick Reiner, it, it carries the meaning of being forthright, blunt, direct, straight to the point. Watch Hebrews 10.35. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. This word in Hebrew, it it, it speaks to the the brave, fearless declaration and and faith confession regarding God's promises that these believers were making. Promises. Trust in God. And see, David recounted how how God had delivered him from the paws of of the lion and and the paws of the bears while he's tending to his father's sheep. Watch what it says in 1 Samuel 17, verses 34 through 37. David said, I've been a shepherd tending to sheep for my father. Whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I'd go after it, knock it down, rescue the lamb. And if it turned on me, I grabbed it by its throat, wring its neck, and killed it. That is boldness. That's boldness. I'll fight an animal over, if I'm shepherding my father's sheep, I'll fight an animal that tries to come in and take it. Because he knew by God what he could defeat. Do you know what you can and cannot defeat by God? Or are you putting yourself in situations where you got to fight all the time? Fighting with no God is the hardest thing you can do. Because it's no longer God's will for victory. When you, put, when, when you excuse God from your situations, 
God will sit on the sideline and watch. And a lot of us have put God out of our lives because we've been told something that we never read. Been told something by scrolling. Scrolling on our phone through social media telling us about a new God, who God is. No, I don't believe that. Believe this. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God's Word, is where you need to be. Now watch this. In the midst of our preparation, we rarely see how God will use it. Have you ever prayed for something for God and you're preparing for it? And, and, and during that preparation, you don't, know, you don't know how God is going to use things. You don't know how he's going to do things. But you've been praying and you've been praying and you've been praying. You've been praying for people that have been sick. You've been praying to get the new job. You've been praying for your children. You've been praying for your wife. You've been praying for your husband. You've been praying for circumstances and situations. And God didn't let you in or even give you a clue about the outcome. You had to remain faithful in what God was trying to give you in his time. In his time. But do not lose hope or confidence. Here it is. God help us in the past is a prophecy for his help in the future. God help in the past is a prophecy for God's help in the future. So when you look back over your life and you see how God has changed things and orchestrated things in your life, that's a prophecy for future rewards of what God is going to do in your life, even when you don't know it yet. That's the God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. And we must understand that God will continue to walk us through what we need to go through in our life, just as he did David. Here's the question for you. Here's the challenge question for you right here. How can we build confidence in God's faithfulness through our personal reflection on his past deliverance? How can we build our confidence in, 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 in God's faithfulness through our personal reflection on his past deliverance. Some of us think back to the past, but we don't believe the future. He saved me then, but don't believe he'll save me from what I'm going through next week. America has become so reactionary. Everything is a reaction when everything for believers should be faith. Everything should be faith, not a reaction. But we in a governmental system, in a system of the world that says react after you see. God said react before you see. Because if you believe in me, what's coming is what you're going to need. But this is what I need you to do. Show me your faith before I show you it. Show me your faith. I didn't say don't work. I said have faith and works. So show me your faith and your work before I show you what I'm going to give you. Show me your faith. Or have people talk to you out of your faith? People good at talking about what they don't know. You ever met those people? They have a whole lot to say, but they don't know what they're talking about. You met them? Come on. They're in your family. You got at least one person in your family that talk a lot. At least one. We all, God, God, I believe God just designed it that way. I'm going to give you one person in your life that's a family member that's going to talk a lot. And they're going to know everything. But they know very little. Watch this. Here we go. Here we go. Number two. Courage born from trust in God's power. 1 Samuel 17, verses 38 through 43. Watch this. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on the sword over the tunic and tried walking around. Because he was not used to it, he said these words, I cannot go in these. Because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd bag, and with a sling in his hand, approached the Philistines. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield barriers in front of him, armor bearers, kept close to David. They kept coming closer. 
He looked David over and saw that he was a little more than a boy, glowing with health, handsome, and despised him. So look at this now. Watch this. I, I just had to stop there for a moment. Watch this. He looked at him and saw that he was little and thought that he was weak. But this is the deal. He looked at that, but then got jealous of how he looked. Isn't that interesting? He got, and, and ladies, y'all, y'all can roll with me on this. Y'all know some women that look you up and down. And, the, and, 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 and this is the deal. They more concerned and intimidated by how you look, not by how you can handle your business. Let's, let's be real. They're intimidated by how you look. She thinks she look good. You ain't said nothing to her. You ain't much. You only said, hey, how you doing? You just, you came with a cool and calm gesture of kindness, and they trying to break you down. Why you don't like her? I don't know. She just thinks she cute. You, the lady only said hello to you. He's, in, he's intimidated because he's jealous of how he looks. Never, never mind, he's much bigger than him. Fellas, you know brothers of hate. Show up in a place where there's a lot of women and you get most of the attention. You know brothers stand on the sideline like, oh, who this dude? Who, the, who this dude? Where you from? And it, he's hating on him and he's bigger than him. Because this is the, it, this is the deal. Enemies are used, the enemy will use hate based on how you look, not just if they can defeat you or not. Not because they can defeat you, they'll hate your existence. They'll hate what you look like. They'll hate the gift God gave you. They'll hate how God created you. They'll hate that you're light skin, dark skin, pretty hair, curly hair. They don't care. They'll hate all of it. They'll hate it all. And the only thing you said was good morning. And this is the deal. You can't give them the time of day. You can't. You go to your desk and you pray for them and eat your, eat your sandwich and drink your coffee and chill. Let God deal with them. Let God deal with them. See, because you don't need to, to, to major in the minor. You don't need to, 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 to get puffed up and, and, and overheat about something that don't matter. They didn't give you the job. They just work with you. They just work with you. Watch this. Watch this. Now, let, let's take a look at the scene here. Well, well, let me keep on with Scripture. He looked at David over and he saw that he was a little more than a boy, glow, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog? See the hate? Am I a dog? That, come, that, that you come at me with a stick. And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Let's set the scene for a moment. Watch this. The Israelites were facing some immediate danger from the enemy in a giant. The entire army of the Israelites trembled, paralyzed, all of Israel paralyzed by an overwhelming presence of a giant. In the midst of this crisis, a young man named David stepped forward, bold. Now this is the deal. Do you think the people, the Israelites, those from Israel, do you think that they were concerned with David being a small young man with a stick and a rock, with a sling. I'm sure they were concerned. They were like, how is this going to work? How is this going to work? As large as he is, how is this going to work? How is this going to work? And a lot of times we are concerned about situations that, had, that, that, that we see and, 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 and we're up against things that are large but the problem is, God is not telling us to look at, at the situation. He's telling us to keep our eyes on what he gave us. What is so large in your life that even after Thanksgiving, all that food you done ate, that is still a problem? And you've been praying about it and praying about it and praying about it. And God say, I see it, but you're so eager for him to change something. What is it? Because you can eat all the food you want on Thanksgiving and still be worried. You can hang out with all the friends and the family all you want and still be worried and concerned about something in your life that you are going to have to deal with that you want God to move on. 
And good times don't take it out of your mind. What is it that you're concerned about that's so large, that's so big, that you're waiting on God to show up? And God said, I'm already present. I've already I just need you to continue in faith. Not, not look at the giant, not look at the obstacle, but look at the faith in me and know that it's done. Look at the faith in me and know that it's done. Watch this. Watch this. Sometimes our greatest challenges seem so large. Watch this. But in those moments is when our trust in God's power become so crucial. Trusting in God's power become so crucial. So see, there's, there's the armor of the world and there's the armor of God. Now here it is. When you're dealing with crisis and issues, you need to choose the right armor. You have to choose the right armor. Let me break this down for you. Here it is. David initially was offered the, the, the armor of King Saul. Chose to trust in the large provision rather than relying on his worldly armor. Watch this. The armor of the world may seem powerful, but David recognized that the true strength come from God. And some of us believe our armor is in our tongue and social media. Watch this. Some of us believe that we have to say something. Now, please understand, some of us want to say something in fights and in battles and in circumstances that we're dealing with. And we need to be quiet. Here's why. Because our tongue is not always holy. You know that you've been in situations that your tongue wasn't holy and you were ready to say something. And you knew what was going to come out of your mouth was not going to be holy at all. It wasn't going to be scriptural. Matter of fact, it was going to be so far from scripture, it was going to have every word in it that you could find online. It was not holy about it. And some of us, when we get older, we think we can say anything. Some of us, when we, when we leap across 50, we can say whatever we want to say. God ain't put that in the Word. And I don't want to hear the excuse that I'm just like my mama. No, you're supposed to be better than your mama. Mama is not an excuse. Well, you know, Pastor, when she got older, she said what was on her mind. That's why you can't get nobody to go visit her on Thanksgiving. Because she say what's on her mind. Knowing that you're going to get in the car and say, that's just mama, and not do anything she say. We can't say everything that's in our heart. We can't say everything that's in our head. We can't say everything that's on our mind. Why? Because it don't honor God. It feels good. Again, I said it earlier. God's not moved by your feelings. Your feelings are subject to him. Again, cross 50 and believe we can say anything. And please, please, when you're talking to young people, it doesn't mean that you know so much more of them, even if you do, that you can just say anything. Because today's generation, I'm going to be real, the Z generation, most of the time, they don't know what you're talking about. They don't, I got, if I got a Generation Z in here, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. You don't know what they're talking about. You don't. You say stuff, you know, they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, you know, mama said a, a hard head carry a soft. Huh? My, my head hard and it carry a soft body? Yeah, I mean, my daddy was saying something like that. I don't know what he's talking about. Stuff. They don't know. They don't know. They still trying to figure out what a rotary phone look like. They have not seen one of those. 
My daughter's in that generation. My daughter was telling me the other night, she said, Dad, remember when I was four and we went in that store and they had a phone booth? She said, wow. I'm sitting around like, it's just a phone booth. But she had never been in one because she didn't grow up in that era. So they don't know what you're talking about when you start making instances about things that they never heard. They don't know. And this is what they do. They'll sit there and listen respectfully and walk off and forget what you said. Because we can't say everything. We can't. Our tongue. And, and some of us believe our armor is our tongue. And some of us believe social media is our tongue. Some of us are saying, I I'm not going to fight with armor on my tongue because if I do, the tongue is not holy. Watch what it says in James 3, 6 and 7. Watch what it says. The tongue is so set among the members that it's defiled the whole body. And watch this. Mm. And set on fire the course of nature. And it says, and it's set on fire by hell. The Bible says our tongue is set on fire by hell. And some of us want to send people to hell when the tongue is our problem. We're so busy sending people to hell, and our tongue is creating hell on earth. Because we can create hell at Thanksgiving that'll last the next Thanksgiving. The tongue is a fire. It's set, it's set on fire by hell. That's what the text says. It's set on fire by hell. When you communicate, when you use your tongue, it can burn up a relationship. It can burn up a friendship. It can burn up a place of employment. It can, it can burn up finances. It can burn up how you talk to your children. It can burn up some stuff you didn't mean for it to burn up. The tongue. The tongue. And then, then there's social media, right? That, see, David said, I trust in the Lord's provision. Are you trusting in the Lord's provision? Well, Pastor, how, how do I trust in the Lord's provision? You take God at his word and believe in his promises. And you expect the best from God who always come through. You expect the best of God who always come through. So, so how do I, how do I, Pastor, how do I trust in God's provision? Take him at his word and believe in him and his promises. And watch him show up. Watch this. Some of us have sacrificed the power of the Lord for the worldly armor, right? And some of us are using the armor of social media. Why? Because we believe that we build the armor of social media using agreement from others. We place all of our circumstances and situations out for the public to agree. And we desire for those people to help us with their mouth and their keystrokes as an armor. You take everything that go on in your house and put it out on social media. Looking for agreement. Because somehow, when you felt like you've been wrong, if you can get enough people to agree with you that you were wrong, somehow you feel better about someone treating you wrong. You want to tell somebody off on social media. And the person can be right in your house. But you, refuse, you won't go and sit. The Bible says if you have all with your brother, you go and you talk to him. Yeah, your brother is your husband and your husband because you're believers together. So why is it that if you have a problem with somebody, you go to social media first and don't go to them? And fights get started and people break up and then you ain't going to see them at Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas. Because something you said on social media they didn't like, even if it were the truth. See, social media can be a good thing, but it can be the worst thing ever created. Why? Just like the Bible. The Bible is awesome. But if it gets in the hands of the wrong people, it can kill some folk. Come on. If you go back, the KKK used the Bible. 
militia groups use the Bible to kill people. See, it's not that the Bible isn't good. If it gets in the wrong hands, they can create something bad with it. Just like matches. You can use matches to light a flame that'll cook you a meal. But you can also use it to burn down your house and other people's house you don't like. In the wrong hands, it can be deadly. That's why God, and that's, that's the thing about it. Just because God created good things doesn't mean that good things can't be used the wrong way. And that's why people walk away from God because people have taken the Bible and used it the wrong way and now they want to create their own religion. And then they'll create a religion that tells you you need more than one wife that you can't even find in the Bible. Because everything that is descriptive is not prescriptive. Just because God describes a thing doesn't mean that you go and create that thing. So we have to be careful taking things out of context and running with stuff because we want to benefit from it. Watch this. The armor of social media. The armor of social media. And we desire for those people to be in agreement with us. And the armor of social media seems powerful. It seems powerful. But David recognized the strength come from God. I'm going to fight with the armor of the word. I'm going to fight with the armor of prayer. I'm going to fight with the armor of trusting in God's provisions and power. See, some of us in our lives often seek worldly solutions to problems. But true courage and confidence is found when we cast aside the armor of the world and trust in God's divine power. David chose to rely on God's strength, not his own. Our abilities are limited, but God's power is limitless. Here's a challenge for you. How do we cultivate courage born from trust in God's power, especially when we face challenges? How do we cultivate a courage born from trust in God's power when we face challenges? Number three. Number three, we're closing out. Fulfillment and acknowledging God's name. 1 Samuel 17, 44 to 46. Here we go. Come here, he said, and I'll give you your flesh. I give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. That's David talking. David said to the Philistines, you come against me with a sword and spears and, spears and javelins, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the, the, the God of the, the armies of Israel whom you defile. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I give you the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Do people know that you rock with God? Or are you putting God in the back seat? until you get around the right people. Because some of us are followers of the way when we round people that are followers of the way. Followers of the way, that's what they used to say back in the Old Testament's time. I'm a follower of the way. The way, the truth, and the life. Who are you when you're not around people that believe the same thing that you believe. Who are you? Because you know we can turn it on and turn it off. You know we can, we can rock with Jeezy and then afterwards we can flip on Yolanda Adams. Yeah, 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 we can do Rance Allen. Something about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name I know until you get around certain people then you don't know that name. Yeah, girl, Rent's my favorite song. When are we going to turn up? See, Goliath stood before David with arrogance and defiance. See, see, the same enemy that orchestrates arrogance is the same enemy that makes you feel inadequate. In, in some spaces, we, we are enamored with addressing arrogance. And that is important and necessary. Hear me out. But it is also very necessary to address 
inadequacy. Because if we only address one without addressing the other, then it's incomplete. And there are some obsessions with addressing arrogance. Be humble. Watch what 1 Peter 5 and 6 said. Humble yourself under the almighty hands of God, and in due season you'll be exalted. And that's necessary. Please hear me. That's necessary. I'm not saying don't do away with it. I'm just saying we got to address the other side, which is inadequacy. Watch this. Watch this. But there's not, that, that's not all we should address. We got to look at the inadequacy. And yes, the enemy can provide people, can, can have people to think more highly of themselves. But the enemy is also causing people to think too low of themselves. Inadequacy can destroy the same assignments that arrogance does. Watch this. And the enemy used inadequacy as much as he used arrogance. Now watch this. And when the, we see people that are called by God to do something significant for God, God has to talk them out of their inadequacy. Mary, that's one example. Moses, there's another example. Right? Right? Enoch, another example. Each of them felt inadequate for God's calling. But they had to trust God. Watch what Moses said. I cannot do this without you. Moses said, I can't do this without you. So here it is. What giants are trying to slay you, but you feel inadequate to move forward. Because, see, there's a you that you need to meet that God created that is hiding in there. But you, 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 you just been piled on with so much stuff. And God is trying to get you to see how he created you, right? You're stronger. You're more courageous. You're more confident. You have, you have the, 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 the courage to do what God has called you to do. And he wants to unlock and unleash the you that you haven't met yet. But are you willing to call his name? Even when you're with people that don't know him. Are you willing? Now, first, we have to acknowledge God's authority in the face of adversity. Do you call on God in your prayer time when you're going through? Or when God sends people to help you, you stop praying and focus on the help that he sent. You don't stop praying because people sit, God send people to you. You don't stop praying. Well, God, I don't have to pray no more now because you, you just sent the person that's going to give me a few dollars. Right? And they give you a few dollars and then the problem is not the few dollars of who God sent. The problem is you got money management issues. But you don't want to address the money management issues. You just say, well, if I keep believing in God, true. Keep believing in God, but you got a problem with money. God is not the problem. Well, well you, you know what? I keep doing this and I keep doing that and things are going right and I'm waiting on God to give me my next. I'm waiting on God to give me my next. Well, your attitude about what next is is the problem. It's not next. The attitude and disposition that you carry. Well, you know what? I'm so alone. I can't have any friends. You're not friendly. How are you going to have friends and you're not friendly? How are you going to have friends where everybody you meet is a problem? Everybody you meet is not a problem. The common denominator might be you. I know there's too much truth. I, I know it's too much truth. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch this. So we got to acknowledge God's authority in the face of adversity, right? And it's an invitation to recognize that our battles are not fought alone, but in partnership with God. Secondly, we need to have a firm stand against the forces by defying our well-being and God's purpose in our life. It is an encouragement to face challenges head on, armed with the assurance that God's fight and fighting on his behalf and your behalf leads to victory. We have to approach the battle in life trusting in God's ability to deliver. That's what David did. That's what he did. Here it is. When you have challenges in your life, we have to acknowledge God's name. We, we have to, it, is, it shifts our perspective from the size of our problem to the greatness of God. When you look at the problem, it becomes bigger than God. But when you acknowledge God's name, it shifts the perspective to make him larger than the problem. 
we spend too much time calling on other people's name. Well, call him, he'll fix it. Call her, she know what to do. Call him, we can, when are we going to pray? When are we going to call on the name of God in times of need? When are we going to call on the name of God when we face the challenges? Have you ever met people that face challenges and they already can tell you the outcome before they get a full grip on what the challenge is? That's some learned behavior. Some of us learned that in our family. We've learned that if we see something and we don't have all the information, well, you know what? That's how it always worked. That's how it always ends. That's what I've seen before. That, no. Just because it's what you've seen doesn't mean that it ends the same way. And what has happened is we've become enamored and we've become comfortable with saying what's going to be. And God said, I have a different outlook and a different outcome for you, your children, your husband, for everything that you touch. I, along with who I am, when you acknowledge me, shifts it from being larger challenges to being focused on me. Now watch this. In our battles, big and small, victory is assured when we acknowledge his name. And we trust in his divine plan. Here's the question. Is the battle yours or is it God's? Who battle is it? True satisfaction comes when we acknowledge his name and his power that leads to victory. In closing, watch this. Watch this. The title of this, 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 this message is A Satisfying Fit. What are you attempting to try to fit in your life that does not fit? What are you attempting to fit in your life that does not fit? We look at situations and problems and circumstances that have happened in the past, and we try to assist God by fitting something in our, our lives. Is it the finances that you try to fit in your life? That God say, no, 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 come closer. I don't need you to fit finances in. I take care of you. If I take care of the world and the belongings of the world, and if I create the birds and the trees and I create nature and everything in it, what makes you think I won't take care of you? I'll take care of you. But what you've done, if you focused on that so much, and you only find comfort in one part of who I am, God has sent just one part of who I am. Could it be that God wants you to know him in his entirety? God is a big God. His attributes are incredible. He is amazing. But we only know one side of him. You're missing so much more. What if you only know one side of your spouse? What if you knew that that man was just a great provider? You knew nothing else about it. How great would the relationship be? What if you only just knew one side of your husband? Oh, man, she can burn in the kitchen. She can get down. That's the only side I know of her. What if I only knew one side of my family? And we'll be in the doctor's office wondering where this came from. You, you, you see how things can be incomplete? Because God is trying to say your satisfaction is only halfway there. Because you only know half of me. You only know, you only, and then you want to fit other things in that don't belong. Why are you trying to fit pieces into God's plan? And it's not your plan, it's his. Stop trying to fit pieces in. Stop trying to add to. Stop trying to force things. Stop trying to fit things in that don't belong. You know he's no good. You know he don't want to do right. You know she don't want to do right. You know they don't want to act right. But you want to fit and force. Fit and force. Fit and force. And you're saying, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. You're not satisfied because I'm trying to fit things in. You're trying to fit things in. 
Até então, pulão. See, back in the day, we laughed at the people that tried to put the circle in the square. Knowing that it wouldn't fit. And you look at them and say, obviously, it's not going to go in there. It won't fit. But we're the same people that try to fit everything in our relationship but don't want to talk about it. A satisfying fit. You know what David had? David had everything he needed for the battle that fit him. He did not try to use someone else's armor to do what he needed to do. And we're busy trying to fight things using other people's armor. The armor of our own tongue and the armor of social media and the armor of people around us. But if you clothe yourself in righteousness that come from God, staying on your knees and asking for him to give you what you need, you can fight your battle. But when you going to give it to God? God said, the reason why you don't see victory is because you haven't given it to me yet. What if David had went and just continued? What if David had tried to fight a giant in an armor that didn't fit him? David had victory. He took care of the giant in an unconventional way. And God says, there's time for you to start looking at me and saying that, God, you'll deliver it to me. But it may not look like it used to look. Can you accept that? Can you accept God giving you something and showing you something and taking care of challenges in a way that you didn't expect? Or does it have to be your way? And God said, the reason why you're still sitting and you're not seeing the victory is because I have a way that I'm going to do it that you don't expect. Bible clearly states that's a way that seemed right to a man. But in the end, there's destruction. Choose not destruction. Choose Jesus. If you don't know God, it's your time. Every head bow, every eye closed. Father God, we thank you right now for our time together. Father, we yield and give ourselves to you. Thank you, Father, as your word have gone forth. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Father, that we get before you to glorify you, to worship you in spirit and truth, to give of ourselves to you. Father, you are truly amazing. Captivate our heart, mind, and soul. We trust you, Father. And Father, there are big challenges that we face. There are challenges out there. There's challenges that are in our heart. Some that we have not even prayed about. Some we have not spoken with you about. Some, Father, that just, just we, we came here today worried. We came here today unsure. We came here today wondering what was next. Father, we lay this challenge before you right now. David trusted in your provisions and your power. Father, I trust in your provisions and your power. I know your promises are true yesterday, today, and forevermore. But Father, I want to believe it in my heart. Because I know you'll change things. I believe you'll change things. Father, I show you faith and works. I just don't want to talk about what it looks like. I know that I'll see it even if it's different from the past. I trust you because you've always shown up. And Father, I want to continue to learn from you and grow in you. So Father, you hear the hearts of your people in the mindset that they have right now. Transform and renew. Father, in the name of Jesus, we trust you. So right now, Father, take over. Every circumstance that are on the heart and the minds of your people right now, take over. Change it. Father, introduce them to the new person on the inside of them that says, I will depend on God. I will trust in God. I will give myself completely to you, Father. Increase our faith. Remove all doubt. The enemy has no jurisdiction in our mind and in our heart. You are, Father, truly what we've been searching for. 
And Father, we've, we've dismissed you. Forgive us, Father. We've dismissed you. We focus on other things. We focus on what people have to say on social media. We focus on what people have to say in our family, in our friends. We, we focus on all the things around us. And you're constantly saying, I haven't left you. I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm just waiting on you to acknowledge me. Father, we call your name. Jesus. We call out the name above all names, Jesus. We trust and have faith in you. If you don't know Jesus, online in the building, if you don't know Jesus, this is an opportunity to get into a personal, committed relationship with Christ. Just repeat after me. Father, I, I made mistakes. Forgive me. I turn and repent from all sin, Father. But I need you now. Come into my life. Be my Lord and lead me. Because I trust in your leadership. I trust in your ability. I trust in your word. I trust in the Father, Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Show me the way. I'll be your son. I'll be your daughter. You be my Lord. You guide me and lead me. I want to know who you are more. I want to know more about you, all of your attributes. I want to study your word. I want to follow you. Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me into all truth. Not the truth that people want to put out there, but your truth. Not the truth of the world, but the truth of the Spirit of God. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. So I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is risen from the dead. So I believe it, Father. I know you went to Calvary for me. I trust you that you've saved me now. You've saved me. And I want to commit my life to you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. God is truly amazing. God is truly amazing. We thank God for every opportunity that we get to be here together. And if you made that commitment to God, you made that commitment to God online and in the building. If you made that commitment to God, let the moderator know that you are saved and you trust and believe in Christ and you want to be led by him. I want you to let the moderator know. I want you to connect to revivechurchatl.org, which is our website. Put a prayer request there. We'd love to get your name and get some information to you that will help you in your new journey in faith. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for those that have been saved today. That have been saved today. If you're new here at Revive Church, I want to get an opportunity to connect with you. If you, if we have a young lady here to my right and to your left that's holding up a sign that says first time guest. If you are a first time guest, we want to put a gift in your hand. We want to let you know that we appreciate you of you being here and deciding to come and connect and worship with us today we don't believe that it was by chance we believe it was by god that you were sent here to worship with us we want to put a gift in your hand and we want to thank you we want to pray for you we want to connect with you so i'd love to meet you so hey i want you to know that here at revive church we believe and trust in god and we want to walk with you on the path of righteousness and a committed relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to help you and aid you in that way. So if there's anything we can do for you out there on Facebook, on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, we want to be able to connect with you and help you walk in this new journey of life in a life-giving and life-changing relationship with God. We believe here at Revive Church that we want everyone to be committed followers of Christ and we want people to encounter God's best for their life. So family, before we leave here today, I just want to have a prayer for you before Elder Tom come and give you some more instructions. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for our time together. We bless you and we honor you with our time together. We trust you and we thank you for all things that we depart today, Father. Lead us and guide us into all truth and protect us as we leave here today. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And at this time, thank you. God bless you. And we'll turn the services over to Elder Tom. Amen. Amen. It is giving time. Aren't we glad about that? Amen. 
Here at Revive Church, our giving scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7, and it reads, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Here at Revive Church, there are three ways to give. You can text any amount to 84321 and click on the link that you get. Then select the green logo with the white R that says Revive Church. And then you can put your giving amount in there. To my right and your left, there's a giving table and a giving box. If you want to come up and uh, fill out an envelope, you can give there. Also, you can go to revivechurchatl.org, click on the giving tab, and uh, give any amount you would like to give there. Uh, if anybody is in need of prayer, our leader and elders are down front to pray for you, or pray for someone else that you've been praying for. So, again, we look forward to uh, seeing you again. Thank you for coming out. Those online, God bless everyone. Have a great week. We look forward to meeting you outside. Thank you. Yeah. Wait a second, let me brag on my God. 